to read the definition of an available parent. And I'm going to warn you that this is going to seem undoable and highly idealistic from the outside. The available parent of a teenager is open to discussion, offering advice and problem solving, but not insisting on it. He allows his child to make some mistakes, setting limits primarily where health and safety are concerned. He never lectures. He is available, but not controlling. The available parent is self-aware and keeps his own emotions in check when dealing with his team. I gotta read that one again. The available parent is self-aware and keeps his own emotions in check when dealing with his team. His last word, right? Yes, thank you so much for the truth. She, she is unconditionally loving and accepting and open to new and different ways of thinking. As such, he is neither cruel nor dismissive ever, ever. The available parent is fun and funny and can bring levity to the most stressful situation. All that is to say there are no conditions to his availability or hers. It is absolute. So what do I like about this? It's very idealistic. I get that. I'll address that in a second. But there are all these books out there that focus on kind of exerting our influence on our teen until they succumb to our will and do what we want them to do. And in my experience, that doesn't work very well. Usually, if kids get that, they start running the other way, especially if we don't have any traction with them, if we don't have any, any balance in the emotional bank account, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, this is a focus on what we can do. This is a focus on our behavior and our attitudes and the little paradigm shifts that we can make to connect with our kids in a way where our parenting has teeth, in a way where when they're later in adolescence making decisions that are tough in the middle of the night, they're thinking, what would mom and dad think about this? Instead of, I don't care what mom and dad would think about this. There's a big difference, you know? That's right. And this is empowering to you. The idea of availability is to empower your child and teach them the competence and resilience they need to be successful. This is our goal. If you keep that in mind, that's your mandate. You're good to go. Make sense? Okay. We get to choose our vibe when it comes to our kids, right? And um, a lot of times we tend to choose, as parents of teenagers, kind of a funky vibe. I work with this girl. She's a young teenager. She's Funky. She's kind of a Doc Martin boot wearing, long sock wearing, short skirt wearing, crazy hair, crazy makeup, kind of arty, funky, really cool, fun kid. You'd all love her. You really would. But mom is a Basswegian wearing, khaki wearing, monogram sweater wearing, very, very conservative mom. And mom can't stand the way her kid dresses and behaves. And it is palpable in the room. This mom withholds her affection from this kid. And the vibe that this girl gets from her mom is, you know what? Right now, you're not good enough. And I will open up to you when you become good enough in my eyes. And this is, a, this is kind of a subtle thing that, you know, sometimes we decide, you know, right now my kid has not graduated to the good enough category. And that never works. It doesn't work if our kids believe on any level that they're not good enough. Because good enough, if that's an issue, usually means absolutely perfect. And no kid is going to meet that standard. So we can decide right now, and I would love for everybody in this room to decide at the very least on a paradigm shift right now, if you don't feel, and picture your kid that's the toughest kid, if you don't feel right now that eh, my kid's not quite good enough in my eyes. Decide right now that you recognize my kid is not what he or she does. My kid is who they are, characterologically, fundamentally. That's who my child is. And so no matter who he or she is dating, no matter what grades he or she is getting, no matter what they're doing in the middle of the night, no matter who they're texting or friending or whatever, right now, they are good enough in my eyes. Can everybody do it? Yeah. I hear the enthusiasm. <laughs> yeah, it, it's a really important point because, believe me, if you don't feel like your child is good enough, your child is keenly, completely aware of that. This girl, I, I said, if you had 30 seconds 
with your mother and you knew you had her ear, you knew she was listening, what would you say to her? And she said, oh, that's easy. I would say, love me like you would have if I had turned out the way you pictured me. Oh! Can you imagine having your kid feel that way? Love me like you would have if I had turned out the way you pictured me. Absolutely sincere, organic thing to say, and brutal and heartbreaking, right? We don't want our kids to feel that way. So make sure your kid is good enough right now.